A 10 kiloton nuclear bomb explodes in the center of New York, one of the most populated areas in the world. The explosion generates a white flash brighter than the sun, momentarily blinding people within a 10 kilometer radius all the way to New Jersey. A scorching heat wave and a gigantic fireball as hot as the sun pulverize anything within a 30 meter radius. On the ground, only silhouettes remain, nuclear shadows of what were people just seconds before. Horrific. And this terrible scenario is just the beginning. Today, we are preparing a realistic simulation of a modern nuclear war. Which nation would strike first? How many billions of people would die? And what kind of society would remain afterward? Which nations would be capable of reducing the planet to ashes? It's hypothetical, but the United States and Russia are the two nations with the most considerable nuclear arsenals. Both possess thousands of nuclear warheads enough to cause unimaginable destruction. And they have already exchanged threats, sanctions, and ultimatums. To say that there is bad blood would be an understatement. A week before the imminent nuclear exchange, panic ensues because world leaders seem incapable of averting catastrophe. But then the worst concern begins to materialize when the first nuclear weapon is launched towards a Russian military target. Immediate loss of life and property occurs near the impact zone. Panic spreads. Immediately seek a fallout shelter. If a shelter is not accessible, go to the most protected and isolated area of your home, because this is just the beginning. Russia, China, and Belarus are preparing a counterattack. The US NATO allies are equally ready to press their red buttons. The fateful day arrives, and the unthinkable happens. Nuclear warheads rain down on major cities, military installations, and key infrastructure. The initial attacks cause millions of casualties within hours. The detonations trigger a series of catastrophic events, including a powerful shockwave. The extreme heat causes the complete vaporization of everything in the blast radius. It's like being instantly cremated at a temperature of 300,000 degrees Celsius or more. Five kilometers away, the shockwave is still devastating. Structures are flattened, and uncontrollable fires rage. The explosion's force can cause severe injuries and casualties. The intense heat scorches the earth, causing third-degree burns to humans. Surviving is an uphill battle as the world crumbles around us. 10 kilometers from the impact, the shockwave is still powerful. Buildings are damaged, and the explosion has a destructive force. At this distance, the immediate danger lessens, but the impact is still perilous. The heat can still cause first and second degree burns. 20 kilometers away, the shockwave has lost much of its initial power but remains dangerous. Buildings will suffer structural damage, and there is a risk of injuries. The heat, though less intense, can still trigger fires. Surviving here is more feasible, but the challenges will certainly not be easy. Back to our timeline. Just one day after the nuclear exchange, tens of millions of people are dead, and many more are injured. Entire cities have vanished. All that can be done is to wait in a fallout shelter. Use a Geiger counter, if you have one, to monitor radiation levels and stay tuned to emergency broadcasts. Naturally, the amount of destruction will depend on the size of the bombs. In the first week following the exchange, the world is gripped by shock and disbelief. Vast areas of the Earth are enveloped in nuclear fallout, radiation, and ongoing fires. These catastrophic effects have triggered secondary problems, such as lack of food, clean water, and shelter. A silent killer emerges, diseases, spurred by the sanitary conditions. The death toll rises. The soot and ash produced by the nuclear explosions and the ensuing fires have generated a cloud that prevents sunlight from reaching the Earth's surface. This leads to a significant drop in temperature. The world is now enveloped in a nuclear winter. 
The immediate consequences of this situation are heavily felt. Food and clean water become even scarcer. Communities huddle together in a desperate attempt to warm up and feed themselves. Food supplies must be rationed, and radiation levels continuously monitored. During the first month, the world remains a desolate and radioactive landscape. Scavengers venture among the ruins of once thriving cities in search of supplies and resources. The disastrous situation leads to further struggles for access to water, food, and shelter. The death toll continues to rise inexorably, surpassing a billion casualties. The world is in a deep and relentless freeze. Survivors face a relentless battle against extreme cold and dwindling supplies. As law and order break down, forming communities to provide mutual aid and protect supplies becomes essential. After the first year, improvised governments begin to form, seeking to provide a semblance of stability. The death toll, more than 3 billion. Society seeks to accept the reality of a world without modern comforts, connectivity, or the comfort of technology. Renewable energy sources are explored to generate some heat and a bit of electricity. Small communities continue to exchange resources and knowledge. Health services begin to timidly re-emerge, and basic education becomes crucial for a new generation. Aim to be active members of your community, teaching the young, cultivating plants in vertical gardens, and participating in reconstruction projects. Five years on, the world is completely different. Surviving communities grow in size and number. Trade networks extend over wider areas, reconnecting isolated groups. Scientific collaboration aimed at solving the challenges of a post-apocalyptic world reignites human hope. Traditional agriculture has evolved into controlled indoor farming, producing modest yields. Yet, the death toll continues its relentless march, now surpassing 4 billion, and new local warlords emerge. Many species, including humans, are still at risk of extinction. Despite humanity's remarkable resilience, the road ahead is long and tortuous. Let's hope this scenario remains firmly in the realm of fiction and that, when the time comes, the world chooses peace over destruction. How do you think you would fare in a nuclear apocalypse? Would you be able to survive for two months? If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel.